Lumina Neo, can it be your only photo editor in 2023? In this video, we're gonna find out. Lumina Neo is an AI powered photo editor for your MacBook, for your Windows device. And in this video, we're gonna find out if it could be your only photo editor you use in 2023. We're gonna have a look at two different images. One got shot on a Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV and will be a JPEG version. And the second image we're gonna have a look at it is a raw file from a Fujifilm X-T4 or a rough file. So you got a good understanding of two different formats when using Lumina Neo as your main editor maybe. Later in the video we're gonna talk also who is the program for, what the program will deliver throughout the process you're gonna see. But also I'm gonna leave a link down in the comments from both images so you can download them if you decide to buy Lumina Neo or subscribe to their subscription plan but also I'm gonna drop a 10% discount link down in the comments as well so if you decide to subscribe to Lumina Neo you get 10% discount with the discount code Florian so let's dive straight into it so now we opened Lumina Neo and the first thing you're gonna realize is how clean and organized the layout is the layout is very stripped down to the bare minimum what I personally find quite good because Right now if you go and start looking into programs, programs can be very quick, very overwhelming. But this is nice, clean and organized. On your left hand side, you got your library basically, your folders, you can add photos, you got all photos, sample photos, you got five different sample photos as well. So let's add two pictures which I pre-chosen already, which we're gonna use. So basically it's once is a landscape image, which got shot on a Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV. Here it is. But now we're going back to catalog and add a second picture, which is basically a portrait from a Halloween theme, which I shot last year on a Fujifilm X-T4. This is gonna be a raw file, so we need to do a little bit of a different process when it comes down to the raw files. So let's go quickly one more time through the layout. As mentioned on the left hand side, you got your catalog, you can add your photos, all photos, sample photos, single image photos, recently added, recently deleted. You got three tabs here at the top, basically your catalog where you can choose your image, then your presets, where you got a bunch of presets already, but we're coming down to this in a minute as well. And then basically your edit tab, where you can see all your sort of adjustments you would like to do. So we're gonna start off with the landscape image because I wanna show you the sky replacement as well and how easy it can be. If you got the landscape image and you're not 100% happy about it, how to tweak it to make it even more interesting. Because landscape images, it's all about time. You need to have a time. You need to be at the right place at the right time. And this doesn't work always. So let's jump back. On the right hand side, you can see what sort of camera the image got shot at. In this case, it got shot on a Sony Alpha 7 Mark IV with a 24 to 105 millimeter lens. And then at ISO 250, 94 millimeter F9, and 250th of a shutter speed. So when we wanna edit this image, we can double click on it and the image gets zoomed in. We can go over to presets and would look through all the presets which are here already. There's a bunch of presets already installed. You can also create your own presets if you want. So because it's a kind of landscape image, we're coming down to the landscape presets and just having a look at what we could do, what we could use. Let's say we use the overcast because we didn't have much clouds at all. It was a very sunny day with barely any clouds. So we have five presets already loaded. And if we're just going through them, we can see how the image changes and adjustments get made via preset already. And when we're flicking through, you need to give the program a few seconds. It is AI based. So the program needs a few seconds to analyze your picture 
and make it adjustments accordingly. So it's not like you press and everything is changing straight away. You need, it, you need to give a program a few seconds to process the information you would like to apply for. So I'm not really usually a big fan of presets. So we're going over to the edit tab and doing everything by ourselves. So now we're in the edit tab. On the left hand side, you can add layers like Photoshop. You got in the middle your image. On the top, you still got your three tabs, catalog, presets and edits. And on the right hand side, you see basically all the things you can do as adjustments. Let's say you wouldn't see your histogram here on the right hand side. Very simple, easy. Just right click onto the image, scroll down, show histogram, and you can add your histogram here as well, which I personally like to have to just work with it. So let's start off with a layer properties, crop, favorites, essentials, creative, portrait, professional. You got a lot of adjustments you could make if you wanted to. Let's start off with a little crop just a tiny bit just to follow the rules of 30 bit put the bridge pretty central and then click apply and now we cropped our image already but because it was a very or it was a very sunny cloudless day we're going to jump straight down to sky replacement and go crazy just to show you what the program actually can do so in the sky tab, you've got a bunch of different skies you can use as well. We come over and choose, uh, well, I would say a blue sky or a bright blue sky and see what we got on options. Here are currently three in and we want to add some clouds. So we're just double clicking the clouds and boom, we have added already a different sky to our image. And the image looks already way, way better than it was before. If you want to see the before and after, then you come here down to this little eye icon. You click it and you hold it and basically the sky vanishes and you see your original image. If you're done with these adjustments, you would need to click on sky and then this tab closes and it will reset the tab as well. But I'm gonna come down to this in a second. The sky so far looks pretty good. It matches the theme of a the day, but I want to have a sky a bit blurred out. I don't want to have a sky too sharp in the image that you can tell it got photoshopped in. So if we having still the sky tab open, you can see here at the bottom a few adjustments you could make. Sky orientation, you could zoom in, zoom out or scroll up and down just to get it where you would like to have it. And if you just play around with the sliders a bit, you figure out what looks right for you. So I wanted to blur out the sky a bit, just to make it a bit more realistic. You can also add reflections if you want. And if we bump this a bit up, let's bump it once up to 100%. And here's a point, as mentioned already, the program needs a second to analyze what's going on but then as soon as you move the slider again, you should see some sort of reflection in a river. When we're going to come down to sky adjustments, we can defocus our sky basically, which is important for me because I don't want to have it like too obvious that the sky got photoshopped in. So if we're playing around with the defocus slightly and then we can see how the sky falls a bit into blurriness, which is definitely important because my main focus was on a city and a bridge. So I would defocus it by plus seven. We could add a bit of grain or haze and we can change the warmth and the brightness of the sky as well. So if we wanted to go a bit darker with the sky, we could add a bit of darkness to it. So if you have done all your adjustments to this picture, you basically click down onto the sky icon again and you've done your adjustments to the picture. When you come down here at the bottom, you see basically another eye icon, which is basically a preview, which gives you a before and after preview. If you click it and hold it and you're going to see how dramatic this image already changed. 
So let's say you are not really happy with the sky and you're going to come back to the sky adjustment tab. No settings are available right now or all settings you put in aren't available anymore. So basically what you need to do is you click a sky button, close the tab, come here at the top over your histogram to edit, click edit and here you find your sky adjustment where you could fine tune basically those adjustments again after you've done several adjustments and you aren't really happy with it. So basically we can come down to sky adjustments again and say, you know what, I want to have it a bit darker, the sky, tiny bit warmer maybe, and I want to defocus it by 10% instead of 7%. So you've done this, you click on sky, and your edits will be saved here. Your edits or your adjustments, fine adjustments, can be always be done under edits. Let's come over to tools again, and we have replaced the sky. So now we want to do a bit general adjustments, we want to develop the image. We could say, okay, the image looks fairly bright, it's perfectly exposed at the moment, but I would like to have it slightly a bit darker. So we can turn down the exposure slightly, we can add a bit of contrast, and the highlights maybe a bit down. While it's the exposure, I would just turn down to minus 0.10. And I think the image comes nicely together. Now, of course, you could add or could convert in a minute the image also in black and white if you wanted to. But at present, we're still in a developed tab. Now you could bring down the blacks a bit more, bring up the whites a bit, could add a curve if you wanted to, just to fine tune the image as much as you would like to. Then we're coming down to, let's say, we'll put some sharpness in. And then we're closing this tab already. And if we're doing a before and after, you can see quite a bit of difference going from where we started and where the image is right now. Let's say we wanted to convert the image in black and white. You can do this as well, very simple, easy. You just click on convert to black and white and your image is black and white. You still got the option to mess around with your luminance in your black and white image. Bring a blues a bit up, magenta a bit down. And if you're done with that, you literally click on black and white again and you've done your adjustments. If we're doing a before and after again, you can see there's quite a bit of difference going. However, I'm not a big fan on black and white in this image right now. So we're coming back to our edit tab here on the right hand side corner above histogram and just reverse the black and white and delete this edit tab. Coming back to tools and then coming down to details. We can increase the small details a bit, the medium details and turn the large details a bit down and increase the sharpening a bit of the image. Close the tab and we're moving on to landscape. In landscape tab is pretty much the same thing. You can dehaze the image Give it a bit more golden hour feeling if you wanted to. But here you need to wait again a few seconds until the program actually analyzed the whole image and decided how much golden hour feeling it would like to add to the image. Let's go once crazy so that you can see actually the difference how golden hour feeling this landscape image would look like. And if you click on this eye icon again, you can see the difference from where we come to where it is right now. Nice sunny with beautiful cloudy sky, but I think it's a bit too much for this. So we turn it, let's say to 45%, click on a landscape and then come down to the creative tab where you could relight your image as well. You could use the brightest part near you to brighten up a bit if you wanted to, just to give you an example, if you, see here the bottom of the river which brightens quite dramatically up when we push it up to 100% but in this case we just push it up a bit 17% then we're coming down to the brightest farthest part and if you turn it up to 100% you can see how we overexpose our image basically so we're going to turn this a bit back down let's say to 20% looks about right 
And then you can also work with your depth if you wanted to, which then decides how much depth, how the re-alightening adjustment will work. So let's turn this, let's say to 50%, close the tab, and then let's say I would do a bit of sun rays as well. Place sun center, let's see what happened. So now we're gonna have here a little black dot with a white middle core. This is gonna be our sun placement basically where we can decide where we would like to have the sun. So we just put it in the right hand side corner and give the amount, let's say a five. So now basically you got a fake sun in your image as well. So the overall look, you can adjust of course how much the sun is meant to shine, how bright the image is gonna be, and the sun rays length as well, let's say 100%, just to give you an idea how the image will react when you do certain adjustments. So let's say 34%, sun settings, sun radius, let's turn this up a bit as well. So, and then you could do a lot of other things as well. You could add some film grain if you wanted to. If you, if you are this type of person who likes the old school film look with the grain as well. Let's add a bit of grain just to give you a good idea how things will work. And then you got also portrait settings, which obviously in this image wouldn't work, but also you got professional settings like super contrast, color harmony, Dutch and burn and clone if you wanted to. Let's do a bit of super contrast and let's add a bit of contrast to it. Midtone contrast can be up as well and shadow contrast up as well a bit. And then I would say we're just gonna leave the image here. And if we have a before and after look down here on the eye icon again, you can see this was a plain, flat looking cityscape, landscape image. And now we turned it into this, which if you would upload it onto social media, probably no one would, would tell or could tell that the sky is fake, the sun is fake. It's this easy. As you have seen, we turned a flat looking picture into something interesting to look at with a few simple, easy clicks. And I was mind blown first time I tried Lumina Neo, how easy it is and how easy the layout is. The only thing you need to consider is that if you use it, you need to give a program a bit of time to analyze the image, what's going on. And I'm just gonna show you right now the basic bare minimums, how to get you started. There's so much more you could do with Lumina Neo. Here's another quick tip before we're diving actually into the raw file. If you're really happy with this sort of image and with this sort of layout, you could add your settings or you could save your settings as a preset as well. So basically here at the bottom where we have a before and after look of an icon or your zoom icon where you can say you zoom further in if you wanted to. Let's zoom out a bit again. You got the actions button, which basically reverts your picture to the original, or you save it as a preset if you wanted to. And you could create own presets, landscape preset as an example. And you could save it and create your own presets as well. Very simple and easy, no big fuss about here. But we don't wanna do this. We wanna quickly export the image as well. So basically you just come down here, right click, mouse click, click of export, and then basically call it Cityscape Salzburg in this case, because I shot the picture in Salzburg. And then you can basically choose where you would like to save it. If you would like to add a bit of sharpening, in this case, I add a bit of sharpening because I do like my images a bit sharpened, but nothing too crazy. And then basically we're gonna leave the resolution on 300 pixels, or in, in this case, because we wanna potentially upload it to social media, we're gonna do 270, 72 pixels. Quality we leave at 100% and then we just click save and then your image get exported. So it takes a few seconds and then you basically just close down your program, find your image, 
here's our image. This is what we created and this is what we started. So but now let's jump back into Luminar Neo and do a raw file as a portrait. So Luminar Neo, we're coming back to catalog and then we open our Fujifilm X-T4 raw file, which you can see here in the right hand side corner again, what sort of camera I used, what lens I used, what sort of settings I used. Fujifilm X-T4, Fujifilm 50 to 140, f2.8 at the ISO of 250, 71 millimeter at f2.8 at the shutter speed of 400 and I used some flush as well for this image. So now you could say, okay, I'm gonna try presets again where you got a bunch of presets available. Let's come down to the portrait presets and let's see what happened. Let's assume we would like to turn this image into a black and white image. We open the black and white or monochrome selection of presets and you got basically five presets you could use. Let's see how this image will react when we're just going over the presets. But as I mentioned, I usually do my adjustments by myself because I'm a bigger fan of doing adjustments by myself. So now we say it's a raw file. Now we do a slightly different process than with the JPEG. We're gonna come down first to the develop raw file. So now you could use camera profile lumina default you can leave it like this and now we're going to do basically our adjustments like you would do in lightroom photoshop capture one affinity photo you basically do your first basic adjustments to the raw file and convert it slightly into a usable jpeg so we're going to start off with exposure let's say 0 0.59 looks about right. We add a bit of smart contrast again. Then our highlights we can bring up a bit because I had the hidden speed light here as well to pretend the sun is coming through the trees. And then our shadows we boost up as well a bit. So again, we're having our histogram, we can work with it as well. If the histogram wouldn't be shown for whatever reason, just do a right click and make sure show histogram is ticked and then your histogram should be there without any issues. So now our blacks, we definitely need to boost the blacks a bit up in this image and bring the whites actually a bit down. And then we're gonna come down to our curve, we'll add a slight curve, nothing crazy, just to balance the image a bit. As mentioned, I personally like to sharpen my images by 10% or plus 10. So, oops, you can zoom in with one mouse click and then one mouse click out again. If you do a double click like I did, you're gonna come back to your catalog. So basically just do one click to actually zoom in, have a look and zoom out again. So now we're coming back to our development tab where we haven't finished. Gonna scroll down, noise reduction you don't really need because we shot the ISO 400 or whatever it was, so you don't need really noise reduction. You could add it if you wanted to. Optics, you could do auto distortion corrections, auto fix chromatic aberrations, but I do leave it how it is because sometimes I do think it adds actually to your picture. So now we're scrolling up, doing a one before and after. This is where we started. This is how our raw file looks like right now. So now we're gonna close the development tab and basically start editing. So now we're gonna come down to our color tab. Now you could decide how much saturation you would like to add to the image, vibrance, but usually I never mess around with the saturation really. I do like the saturation, how it comes out of the camera. However, I would like to play around a bit with the U slider because I do want to have the greens in the background a bit more to the brownish side, a bit faded to give me this sort of Halloween feeling or I'm in the woods, everything is moody type of feeling. So in this case, we're gonna turn down the greens by, let's say minus 50% and add a bit of blue to it, just to give me this cold, moody look feeling. So I'm happy with that, so we're gonna leave it. 
tap the color tab. Details, I like to increase a bit again, all my details basically. And I like to add a bit of sharpening to my image as well, not too much, otherwise it's gonna be too sharp. And when we're just having a look, as you can see, the program needs a second to load the adjustments we made. And then we could say we wanna relight the image. We're gonna go with the brightest, nearest point again, or subject, and we just bump it up to 100% to see actually what's happened. As you can see, the, the program needs a second to adjust the settings, but this looks about right to me. You could do it with the brightest, farthest, point as well which we're going to turn down a bit and then we're going to relight the image just like that so that our model basically is proper lit our background can fall into the darkness a bit or be a bit darker and our foreground could be a bit brighter in this case but be careful because we light the model at the same time we don't want to overdo it so then we're closing a relight up let's say we jump over to atmosphere Let's say we want to add a bit of mist, fog, haze. Let's do some fog in this case. Let's bump the amount up to 100% just so that you can see what's actually happened in the image. And then a depth up as well. So basically now the whole image is foggy. And now we're going to do our adjustments. We're going to turn the lightness a bit down. We want to have a fog a bit darker. And then the amount can be turned down as well. Let's say... 20% looks about right. It gives you this misty feeling, unclear feeling. However, I think I might turn the brightness a slightly bit up of the fog. Let's do this a bit just to let's turn it up first 100%. That's usually the easiest. And then you make your adjustments. Let's say 30 ish looks about right. You can, of course, use a lot of other things as well, such as like layered fog, mist, haze. But I think the fog in the background looks kinda cool and we're gonna leave it like this right now. You could add a bit of dramatic scene as well. So let's bump the amount of a dramatic feel up as well a bit. Let's say 15, nah, let's do 10 to give me a bit of dramatic feeling. Now we can like beforehand, click the eye icon just to do a before and after. As mentioned, you need to give a program a few seconds to analyze your image. But I think this looks about right. We could do mood as well. And then you could would have options to cinematic toning, creative, cross-processing, portrait toning. So you got already pre-installed LUTs as well. You could use, let's say, Let's try Los Angeles as a mood. So boom, it give, gives you this kind of teal feeling to it, which I personally don't like right now. So we're gonna reset this one and add our own moodiness to the image. Let's say 40 amount moodiness, a bit more contrast and the saturation maybe slightly down as well. And then if you wanted to, you could add mystical as well. Let's add here a bit, gives you even more Halloween feeling. And then we're gonna come to, let's say, let's add a bit of film grain again. A bit of film grain, then you can come down to size and roughness. Let's boost the size of the film grain a bit and the roughness a bit down, let's say 10% roughly. And you can see how we added film grain to it and it gives you a different feeling so then we're going to come down to portrait settings what well, we could say okay if you wanted to you could change the body of the model and shape the body a bit more so now we're going to do it 100 percent again we're going to let 
Luminar Neo analyze the picture until the adjustment got made and then we're going to dial back down our adjustments to the point where we would like to have it. So now you have seen Luminar Neo done their thing and slimmed the model quite a bit down and if we're doing a before and after you can see quite drastically what Luminar Neo thinks is right but I don't personally so we're going to dial it back down a bit and we're just doing literally like plus 10 maybe just to slim down the model a bit and then we're gonna click down the body icon tool and we'll leave it there you also could do the same with portrait bokeh if you wanted to if you think you haven't enough bokeh in the background you can change the settings boost it up to 100 percent let's see what happened and this is a bit too much in my personal opinion because you literally can see what's going on here. And the model got masks automatically already as well as the main subject. So everything behind falls into even more bokeh, but I personally don't like it. So let's add just 10%, 5% maybe, just to give it a tiny little pop in an image. And then we're gonna do a before and after and see what happen. So, and with that said, professional tools we're gonna leave out today because we just wanted to have the basic introduction of the program. And if we come down here to before, this is where we started and after, it makes quite a bit of difference. And if you're not happy, then you come back down to your added tab here to make any final small adjustments if you would like to, or you're not happy with certain images. Let's go back down to color as an example. You could add a bit more saturation to it just to make the model don't look half that right now. And then you can do your final adjustments or final tweaks in an added tab. And again, if you're done, basically, you just come over, click right hand side, mouse click, export, and then you type in your name again, save as Halloween. Where would you like to save it? Sharpening low, a bit of resizing, you want to leave it original. Your size, you could change then, color space format. 72 pixel for internet solution you save it and your image will be th copied out thrown out as a jpeg version into the folder wherever you saved it and then you close luminar neo and basically here is your created jpeg you have created in luminar neo and it looks pretty good if you ask me and if you still want to see it before and after you just jump back into luminar neo come down at the bottom where it says action percentage and your eye icon and you can basically see a before and after where we started and where we ended up. And this is how easy Luminar Neo can be. You can of course create your own folders as well. Let's say you wanted to create a folder, you right click on picture, create album. You can create albums here as well or folders and then basically crop your image just pull, pull it in and you're gonna have all images at the top or you have your created albums where specifically photos are in. And this is how easy Luminar Neo is and there's so much more behind Luminar Neo I can show you another time. But right now I just wanted to that you see that Luminar Neo might be the photo editor for you in 2023. And this was a brief insight into Lumina Neo and as you've seen it is a quite simple program. And who is this program actually for? I would say for everyone who is looking into photo editing and being maybe a bit scared of Capture One Lightroom because you got way more settings in Capture One or Lightroom or you need to do a lot of that settings by yourself. So for anyone who's looking to get into photo editing, I think Luminar Neo is probably the best, easiest program to start with. The layout is very simple and easy. The adjustments got made halfway for you. You just need to decide how much of this adjustment you would like to put onto your image. 
sky replacement, erase tools. You got everything what a good professional program will offer you. Just simplify it for the process for someone who is probably starting out in photo editing. But also I can see this program professionals are using or myself in the future for some sort of special tweaks, etc. You can hook up this program to Photoshop as well if you wanted to. So you do basically your adjustments in Photoshop or your special effects in Photoshop and then you bring your picture into Lumina Neo to do the final tweaks if you wanted to. So I'm very happy with this program so far and I can see myself using it way more often because it's just so simple to use and sometimes a little sky replacement to make your image pop as long as it doesn't look fake at all then this is the way how it goes forward AI takes more over and over as well so having AI tools which will help you with your photo editing I think it's a fantastic thing the program takes a bit longer than normal programs of Capture One Lightroom. So give the program a few seconds to analyze your picture and then adjust your settings, how much you would like to put onto this image. And with that said, guys, don't forget, I got the 10% discount link down in the comments. And also I'm gonna leave the images I used to add it down in the comments as well with the Dropbox, Dropbox link so you can download them and follow my editing flow just to have it easier when you start and getting into it. And with that said, I hope you liked this video today. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the good thing my friends. And with that said, I'm gonna see you very soon in another video. Cheers mate.